It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Let's go walking under the train tracks. I recently saw a YouTube video talking about what's awesome about living in Brickell. One selling point, the guy said, is the underline. This ambitious project is planning a 10 mile stretch of linear park under this elevated train. But in practice, only about a half mile of that plan has been executed. In my opinion, it's a very well executed park that makes creative use of the available space. So let's walk the whole of what has been developed so far and consider its possible future a little. The official theunderline.org website actually has quite a bit of good basic information about it. The site summarizes the inspiration for the project. Quote, In 2013, Friends of the Underline founder, Meg Daly, broke both of her arms. Since she could not drive herself to physical therapy, she decided to take the metro rail near her home and then walk the rest of the way to her destination underneath the train tracks. Even in July, she did not feel hot in the shade of the tracks. She noticed how wide the corridor was and how much space there was, and she was the only person using the space." End quote. That's a sweet story. I will tell you that this is a myth. It is hot here. It didn't take long before I was sweating buckets as I usually do here. Kidding aside, I actually do appreciate the shade. It genuinely did help quite a bit. And we got lucky enough to have a warm breeze to take some of the edge off the humid heat. I think it was somewhere around 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. We were out a little before noon, so the shade aligned fairly nicely with much of the park at that time. I like that the underline was organized within the community, but it's also clear that most of the funding for the project has come from government sources. Phase 1 is already done. The website summarizes the phases and estimates costs. The half mile phase one project cost $16.5 million. About half of that came from Miami-Dade County, $4.9 million came from the city of Miami, and it looks like most of the rest of it came from the state of Florida through one source or another. Curiously, the phase one summary indicates that the project was funded to the tune of $36.3 million. I don't know if that means that that was the actual construction total or if they have $19.8 million left over. It turns out that that is also the exact amount they credit as coming from the Florida Department of Transportation, or FDOT. If the project really has consumed $36 million so far, then that means about a third of the budget came from the city and county, and the rest came from the state. This summary page doesn't cite any of the contributions from various private and municipal corporations. I like the mixed-use concept employed by the underline. That first stretch of southern prairie foliage is quite pleasant, and it was fun to immortalize a butterfly dancing for us and a couple cute dogs being cute. And here you can see the athletic component. It's great to see the basketball half-court in use. There are a couple of apparent ping-pong tables I didn't capture, and various other minor sports features. I'm not convinced they get much use, but clearly the park does get quite a bit of use by walkers like us, joggers, and cyclists. And it seems that before the pandemic there were regular yoga classes and a few other events. I don't know if any of that has resumed. We've walked parts of the underline many times at night. This was the first time we walked the whole thing during the day. Every time we do walk here, I am deeply impressed by how beautiful it is on the whole. It may have been expensive to build, but at least it is pleasant. It will be interesting to see how well it is maintained over the next few years. I think it officially opened last October. It's not even a year old yet. It's worth noting that the Underline project refers to the different sections bounded by various crossing streets as rooms. So far we have traversed the River Room, the Irvin Gym, and the Promenade. Still ahead are the Fern Room and the Oolite Room. Oolite is a type of sedimentary rock you'll see there and in some benches lining the walk. A 
Up ahead, you'll see two more of the uses carved out for the underline. There are small dining tables out in the sun. There's a series of long stone benches. And there is a long curbside bus stop. They've managed once again to do a great job of mixing in plenty of greenery and to have the public walking and bike trails meander through the space to keep it from being too repetitive. And I'll admit that I quite like the green and white paint accenting the clean concrete. It gives the underline its own memorable look. Just a side note that these are not Miami's regular buses. These are Miami's free trolley buses. They make frequent stops and thus are generally slower transportation. I think they are intended primarily for tourists who are not in much of a hurry. But they also seem to get some use by lower income folks as a cheaper alternative to the main buses. Coming up on Brickell's Metro Rail Station, the next station to the north is at Government Center in downtown Miami. And the next one to the south is the Vizcaya Station in the Coral Way neighborhood. Kira and I have not had any reason to use the Metro Rail since we moved here, but in researching the underline, I discovered a valuable fact. Apparently, the Metro Rail Station has public bathrooms. As people who take daily walks of several miles around town, I can tell you that it is very valuable to know where you can reliably find a public bathroom. I plan to see how well kept they are the next time we go wandering out that way. It's understandable that the station is a fairly large structure there's only so much the underlying landscapers could do with the tight spaces alongside the large ground building, but most of the station is actually overhead. This did create a great opportunity for some very attractive landscaping underneath it and interspersed among the trails people coming and going from the station take. If you poke around the Underline's main website, you'll eventually find lots of interesting things. One nearly hidden treasure can be found in the footer of most pages, a link to the public documents section. The first link on that page is titled The Underline Overview. This is actually a 215 page PDF document from 2015 laying out the broad proposal for the Underline. Even the executive summary is 24 pages long. I find it interesting that in an informal survey of three different groups during meetings of how they thought they might use the underline, the majority sentiment was apparently that they would use it for biking, which would certainly make sense if they do eventually stretch this out to 10 miles. Needless to say, I did not read much of this document, but I wanted to point out that it's there, and it is quite interesting for a municipal project. Lots of pretty pictures for kids like me.
So this is part of the Oolite Room. The website describes this as a natural canyon. I find that a little hard to believe though. It looks like it was excavated at least a bit for construction of the metro rail. And it seems plausible that there was an earlier railroad or roadbed here before the overhead lines. But still, the low rock walls are quite an attractive feature and apparently provide shelter for more than a few fun critters. During this entire walk, I did not get a chance to film a metro rail train going overhead. They don't come by as often as the metro mover shuttles. So here's a snippet I caught on a recent night walk of one of the trains. Okay, so at this point, we've reached the end of the Underlines Phase 1 project. We walked on for a bit until we reached the I-95 overpass. I'm glad that the paved bike trail continues onward. But gone are the wide multimodal path and incredible landscaping, but it's still attractive in its own right. The path even runs alongside Simpson Park, one of Miami's few large parks. Hopefully I'll film a visit there soon as well. But let me conclude my main commentary with some thoughts. One is that we are near the end of the overhead tracks. Just up ahead, they run into an abutment and ramp their way down to ground level. This appears to be solely so the trains can go under the interstate. The tracks ramp back up and fly overhead again once they are past I-95. And they continue to fly overhead until they finally hit the Dadeland South Station. That's the end of the line for the metro rail. So I can see why the Underline project ends there. Why doesn't the Underline continue north of the Miami River and through downtown Miami also? Probably mainly because the river forces a break in the path. You'd have to go east or west a couple of blocks to get to one of the pedestrian friendly bridges. But once you get back to the space under the bridge, you'll find it's not really compatible with the Underline. There is a similarly attractive path that already runs from the river to 3rd Street. And then past that is a short stretch of parking lot between buildings, followed by a long tangle of six multi-lane interstate exchange roads, several metro mover bridges, and a parking and maintenance building for the metro mover system. Beyond that, you get into an under-rail bus station and eventually Government Center's metro rail station, and then the giant new Miami Central Station. Past all that, I suppose you could continue the underlying through the suburbs until you hit all 13 lanes of the Dolphin Expressway. You'd have to build a long pedestrian bridge over all that, and so on. So it does seem like there are many obstacles to making that a simple and pleasant run. To be honest, I'd love to see more of the space under the massive I-95 exchange roads be transformed into a public park, 
Right now, it's predominated by some sketchy public parking and several encampments of homeless folks. In the past, it had been a tent city for a large population of Cuban refugees during and for a while after the major exodus from the island. But that's a story for another time. But back to the underline. It looks like Phase 1 cost a bit under $17 million to complete. The project estimates that Phase 2 will cost $18 million for the next 2.4 mile stretch southward. I suspect that the bulk of that will be in the large space just before the ramp abutment, which could make for quite a beautiful little park uh, itself. It would be interesting to see Simpson Park open an entrance connecting with the underlying park. I'm not sure what to think about continuing the project past that point though. It seems to me that the downtown area ends exactly where I-95 crosses over the metro rail. There are the last few high-rise hotels and housing on one side, and on the other, it's single-family homes in a typical suburb layout. And it's nothing but suburb and some low-rise multi-unit housing all the way through Southwest 19th Avenue, where Phase 2 is supposed to end. I honestly don't even know why they chose that endpoint. Given that it's between stations, then there is nothing special that I can see at that intersection. In any case, it seems to me that most of the Phase 2 stretch would get minimal use by the widely spread residents in the suburbs beyond downtown. No doubt bikers would appreciate having the path widened and beautified a bit more too. So will they modify the plans for this project? Will they reduce the scope of the rest of the project to widening the bike path and adding a few mini parks along it near the stations? I suspect that will depend on whether the funding commitments change over time or the costs start rising beyond the budget. But it's also plausible that the project is essentially done indefinitely. Because I'm not involved in the project, nor even know much more about it than I've shared in this video, I honestly have no idea. What I do know is that the Underline is a beautiful and innovative public park. I hope you've enjoyed taking a walk through it with us, and we'll see what the future brings for it. What do you think about all this? Do you like what you've seen? Would you like to see this extended? Would you like to see this adapted to your own city, wherever you live? Tell us your thoughts in the comments. 